Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and welcome back to another Go-based tutorial. Now in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how you can use Go routines within your Go-based programs and subsequently improve the performance with which your programs execute. Now, as always, the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website and I'll be leaving a link to this in the description below. So, using Go routines is a very quick and easy way to turn what would be a sequential program into a concurrent program without having to worry about things like creating threads or thread pools that you would typically have to do in traditional languages like Python and Java. But, as with all concurrent programming, this comes with some inherent dangers that must be considered before you go around slapping the Go keyword in front of all of your function calls. So to begin with, what are Go routines? Well, Go routines are pretty much like incredibly lightweight threads managed by the Go runtime. They enable us to create asynchronous parallel programs that can execute some tasks far quicker than if they were to be written in a sequential manner. Now, Go routines are typically multiplexed onto a very small number of OS threads, which typically mean concurrent Go programs require far less resources in order to provide the same level of performance as languages such as Java. Creating a thousand Go routines would typically require one or two OS threads at most, whereas if we were to do the same thing in Java, we would require a thousand full threads, each taking a minimum of one megabyte of heap space. By mapping hundreds or thousands of Go routines onto a single thread, we don't have to worry about the performance hit when creating and destroying threads within our application. And as such, it's incredibly inexpensive to create and destroy new Go routines due to their size and the efficient way that Go handles them. So now that we've covered what Go routines are, let's go into a simple example of how to use them. We'll start off by creating a simple sequential program that doesn't use Go routines, and then we'll modify that program to then use Go routines after. Let's jump into our code editor of choice. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code and I'll leave a link to where you can get this in the description below. We're going to start off by creating a new function and this will be called compute. Now this is going to take in an integer value and it's going to iterate over this value and essentially just print out. So for i, is zero, i is less than value, i plus plus. We're also going to want to add an arbitrary sleep time here, so time dot second. And after this, we want to do fmt dot print line and i. So this could take in say five, count from zero to five, and it will sleep for one second in between every iteration before printing out the next value in that loop. Okay, let's try call this function now. So compute, and we're gonna do five. We'll call it twice. Now if I was to run this by calling go run main.go, you'll see concurrency with go routines prints out. Zero, one, two, three, four. Zero, one, two, three, four. So these two function calls here execute synchronously. So for now, we've got this compute function which simulates the act of processing any large numbers or something that takes a quite a while, right? We've added this time.sleep for a second just so that we can highlight the order in which each function call executes. But how do we speed this up? If we weren't fussed about the order in which these values were printed out, we could then make them asynchronous Sorry, um, by adding the go keyword in front of our function calls like so. And this effectively turns these into Go routines. Now, this is what I really like about Go. The only thing we needed to change to our existing sequential Go program was to add the Go keyword in front of our compute function invocation. Here we've essentially created two separate Go routines that should now execute in parallel. But if you try and run this program, you'll notice that it completes without printing out the expected values. Now, why is this? Well, this is typically because the main function completes before our asynchronous function calls could execute. And as such, any Go routines that have yet to complete by the end of the main function call are promptly terminated. 
Now, in order to get around this for this simple example, we're going to add a call to fmt.scanline. And as you can see, this starts to print out our values in the order that we expect. And the total execution time of our program takes half the time that it did when compared to the synchronous example. If we enter something and press enter, you should see our program terminates. So in this tutorial, we learned how you can start developing concurrent applications in Go. We looked at what Go routines are and how you can use them to speed up various parts of your system and create performant applications. Now, there's a hell of a lot more to it than just adding the Go keywords to make any of your programs faster. And in future tutorials, we're going to be covering things like mutexes, locks, channels, and so on, to make sure that you've got all the tools you need to be able to create not only performant applications, but safe performant applications. And there's a big difference between the two of them. Now, hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If you did, then please let me know in the comments section below. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel for more Go Programming based content. Cheers.